Welcome to this week of Fly Rod Chronicles. We're out here at the Lodge at Chama in Chama, New Mexico. You know, our, our trout tundra, it made the trip all the way from West Virginia to Chama, New Mexico. Our fly wagon made it also. So welcome to my office, come on in. And you know, everyone thinks I just fly fish. You know I packed this. My wife might have packed this for me. But you know, at Fly Rod Chronicles, we're about fly fishing. We're about the experience. This week, we're doing things a little different. It's about generations. Experiencing the outdoors with your kids, with your father. If you're an anti-hunter, it's your right. We're Second Amendment people. We love hunting. It's a family tradition for us. If you're on the fence, check this show out. It's elk hunting at its prime. If you love elk hunting, then this is your show. So stick around this week on Fly Rod Chronicles. Traveling the world, fishing, enjoying the great outdoors. Those are things that would have seemed impossible to me when I was a kid growing up in the mountains of West Virginia. I'm a lucky man and I never want to forget it and I'm hoping that sharing my experiences with folks will inspire them to do the same. I'm Curtis Fleming and these are my Fly Rod Chronicles. You know, we're calling this show The Generation Show. It's gonna give us a chance to go back and look at some of our highlights. My first trip across the mountain out here at Chama, um, I, I was just impressed with the general area. Then we came to Lodge at Chama, sat down with the manager, Frank Sims, and you know what, I instantly felt at home. Um, not that my home is this nice. It's about to get Western in here. You know, the first time that I got on the property out here, um, we got to see these high mountain lakes. Again, you know, I'm, I'm a dreamer, and I was when I was a little kid, and I'm sure my grades suffered because of it, but I dreamed about places like this. I dreamed about these hidden lakes back in the mountains that was nothing but rising trout. They've got that here, and, and I've got to experience it you know, with friends, I've got to experience it with my family. Um, and you want a fly fishing expedition, an experience. This is your place. This is a place to come. Not only do they have the high mountain lakes, um, they've got Poso Creek. Again, it, it, it's a calendar. It's, um, you know, it's a stories that uh, sports writers used to write about that I used to get in Field and Stream Magazine. Um, you know, Poso Creek, it's that creek that just meanders and snakes through these meadows with, you know, trout that are rising at hoppers. And, you know, you can get three, four, four species of trout out here in just Poso Creek. Um, so, you know, if you're not into the still water fishing in the lakes, um, that, there's ample opportunity to come out here and cast at rising trout in small and medium-sized streams. Three years ago, my family and I came out here to Chama, New Mexico, solely for fly fishing. We made so many memories on that family fishing trip, I was so pumped to get back out here and hunt with my dad. It was kind of emotional. She had said that she has dreamed about elk hunting since she was a little girl. Lakin's 21 years old. I still consider her as a little girl. When you take an animal, it's, it's serious business. So we did a lot of preparation over the summer, shooting, conditioning. She worked it out with her professors at West Virginia University. She took a, a couple tests early. She wrote papers in the middle of the night while she was here. And she took a long weekend to be out here. So Pat, she shot a couple, and, and you feel comfortable? Very comfortable with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's, <laughs> yep, she's she's on. dead on at 100. Yep, and she's good out to two or 300, I yeah. believe. There you if go. If she's comfortable doing it, 
Yep. Yep. She can do it. You feel comfortable? I'm pumped. pumped. You pumped? Yes. Okay. 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 Well, the, the top spark's going to be sleeping tonight, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> hey, we've got to be up at 4 in the morning. There's not going to be much sleep. That's right. That's right. Yep. Yep. We'll have fun. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be. We'll go have fun. Go home. Yeah. I'm so See what happens. We'll be right back with more Fly Rod Chronicles. This segment is brought to you by Fly Rod Chronicles Signature Rods. We'll have fun. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be. We'll go have fun. Go home. I'm safe. See what happens. You know, Pat Carpenter, he is that kind of guy that I would want my daughters mentored by. He is an incredible man. He's a family man. He's a godly man. I think Pat Carpenter's one of the best out there. Um, I guided Curtis and his dad, Sonny. Um, I took Sonny on the first hunt, and he killed a nice, his first bull elk. And I, and I don't know how many years of him hunting elk. Um, he killed a nice six by six bull elk. He was thrilled to death with him. Um, very enjoyable to hunt with, had fun. We got that bull taken care of, then I guided Curtis on his hunt, and he killed a heck of a bull. Shot the biggest bull I've ever shot in my life. <laughs> Thanks to Pat Carpenter. Well, I'll just hum. My dad is right there and got to witness it. That's cool. Um, Front row seat. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks welcome. for being here with me. Here you go. She's a whiz. Then on this hunt, I got the guide Lakin Fleming, Curtis's daughter. Um, so that's three generations of hunters from one family that I've guided. Don't know if I'll ever have that opportunity to do that again. So, kind of special. I'm not gonna lie, 4 a.m. came pretty quick and I'm not a big morning person. But once we got out there, sitting, hearing the elk bugling, hearing all the birds wake up, watching the sunrise over the mountains, I thought I was in heaven, or pretty dang close to it. I've guided here 20 years on the ranch now. Um, guiding mainly the male hunters, um, the guys. Um, I have guided quite a few women. Um, I like hunting with them because they pay attention to you. They don't, you know, they actually listen to the guide. And that's, that's, a, that's key. They're gonna come out right below us. And everybody be still because they got a bunch of cows. Don't shoot him. Listen to me. The big bulls are coming from the right to the left. Shoot him. Shoot him. No, don't shoot him, don't shoot him, don't, 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 do not, do not, do not, don't shoot him. I won't. Narrow as hell. Put a safety back on. The women usually do pretty good, and a lot of times a lot better than the men do, so it's always a pleasure to guide a female hunter. You know, at Fly Rod Chronicles, um, man, we, we live for fly fishing, but our, our family tradition, you know, we grew up hunting. And I've introduced that to my girls. Um, it's not about the harvest with Fly Rod Chronicles. It's about the family experience. It's about the experience of being out in nature, what God has given us, what he's provided for us to eat. And, you know, we utilize every single factor of honey. Um, you know, 
when we harvest the animal, um, you know, we, we keep the elk hair. That's, that's where your elk hair caddis comes from, friends. Um, so we tie up as many flies out of that hair, that elk hair, as, as possible. Um, you know, we love good, unsteroided, not sure if that's a word, but unsteroided meat. Um, you know, these are God's creatures. So, you know, we are all about feeding our family, friends. None of that elk goes to waste. Curtis always said they never throw any away from the elk, and so, you know, the loins are like the best. The tenderloins and the backstrap loins are the best part of the elk because they're so tender. You know, you don't have to let them age so much. And the tenderloins are always located right underneath like the rib cage. You can cut them as thick as you want, grill them up, marinate them, roast them. You can do anything you want with those and they'll always come out good. You gotta keep the drinks cool in the kitchen. No problems in my kitchen. The Fly Rod Chronicles isn't only about fly fishing, it's about our experiences, it's about our travels, it's about family. And I knew that my girls, my two daughters, Lakin and Autumn, and my wife, Shelly, would absolutely enjoy this place. So I had to bring them here. And, you know, fishing with family can be a lot of fun. Sometimes it can be a little stressful too, because you you are hoping for the best. You're wanting them to, to enjoy the experience like you experienced. And you know what? It was like a storybook. Everyone caught fish, smiles, and truly, I think that's what shaped my daughters into young women. All the girls catching fish just the way we want it. Lodge Chama, it makes memories. The Darbys, Greg and his two sons, they got to come out here from West Virginia. They tagged out on the very first day. Dude, that's awesome. That, no, I mean, that's, that is an awesome bull. Yeah, it, was, it, was awesome. That, it didn't yeah. take very long. You know, those memories are embedded for a very, very long time. Cheers, Cheers a great crew. Good Cheers. crew. Cheers. You know, another cool guy that we had out here was Corey Beasley. I held on to this handle a lot this week. <laughs> and he just had one heck of a hunt. Get enough. Got it, buddy. You got it, yes, sir. With Corey, there was a lot of smiles. It was absolutely so neat to see how everybody was high fiving and experiencing that. Pretty incredible. Well, you know, it's a privilege to have Fly Rock Chronicles here again at the ranch, and it's becoming quite a tradition. Curse's dad, Sonny, uh, what a prince of men, what a great gentleman. And then this year, what can you say about that beautiful daughter, Lakin? Incredibly talented. And what a privilege. Again, there's generation one, generation three, and then we get to generation two. Ordinarily, I'm never at a loss for words, but now, Curtis Fleming, 
Well, sometimes it's best not to say anything at all. Here's what I found out about Frank Sims. The more he busts your chops, the more he likes you. He loves me. Oh my God. I hope he'll put that on there. Stick around. More cast and blast action coming up. Gotta get there in one way or another. I'm a fishing bum. Here on the ranch, we have uh, 10 or 11 lakes um, that we fly fish. We've got four miles of the east and west fork of the Brazos River for live water fishing, and we've got about four miles of the Poso Creek, kind of like a little spring creek type fishery. Um, all wild fish, um, a lot of brookies, browns, browns in Poso Creek, brookies, rainbows in the east and west fork of the Brazos River. Along with our hunting and fishing, we get, we have, you know, world-class lodge, um, great meals, um, real nice rooms to stay in, comfortable beds. Um, the lodge has 21 rooms, four of which are suites that you can get. So, you know, Lakin took a four day weekend. You know, we flew her out here and we had to fly her back. And, you know, we even knew she would land, at, you know, at midnight. She would get back to her dorm at three in the morning. She had a 7.30 class. Time was starting to run out. Our camera guy, J-Rod, spotted this one bull, and it, it had to be three miles away. As soon as the guy put the binoculars on it, he said, it's a good bull, let's go see it. So we started our stock, we started our trek, we got over there. So Lakin got to look through her optics to see this bull. Instantly, she turned around to me and she said, Dad, that's my bull. The bull kept on going. We gotta move, we gotta get up here. Come on, come on, come on. So we had to put a good stock on him and we did. Um, it worked out real good. Some of the best advice I've ever received is when you pull that gun up and you're ready to make that shot, if your heart's not pounding and your adrenaline isn't rushing, you shouldn't be behind a gun. But as a hunter, I wanted to make sure that I was confident and I could get my breathing under control and to make sure that when I got that one shot, it counted. He's going to the right. Huh? He's going to the right. He's going to come in that opening. Okay, 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 okay. You got him? I'm ready. He's ready? You got him? Ready, Pat? Got him good. He's down. <laughs> you want to taste it? Put your gun safe. You want to taste it? Yes, yes. Oh, brother. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Huh? Yeah. He was fixing to give yeah. us the slip. <laughs> you all right? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. I can barely hear yeah, it now, but yeah. My legs are shaking. Good job. Thank you. Good job. Shaman, New Mexico is one of my favorite places in the world by far. It's awesome. Lodge at Shaman has been pretty good to us, huh? Pretty darn good, yeah. Your dad killed a nice bull. Yeah. How many years ago was that? That was three years three, ago. Three years ago? Yes, sir. And you killed a heck of a bull. Yep, yep. Now your daughter, Lakin, has killed her first really good bull, right? That's, and, and you guided. All three of y'all. Three generations to a successful <laughs> hunt. That, that's actually that's pretty real, neat. That's, that's pretty really neat. cool, yeah. That's neat. It's Westervelt Ecological Services, time for conservation. You know, I know it's a fly fishing show, but we support the Second Amendment. We love to hunt. And there's a lot of flies in this hive. <laughs> and there's some really good, good back straps. A lot of good elk hair caddises and yeah. really good back straps, tenderloins. Yep. 
steaks and hamburger meat. Yeah. Be real good. Courtesy of Lakin, if it wasn't for her, you guys would be starving right now. I tell you right now. So we got a an elk tenderloin with some calabacitas. You the man. Anytime, my pleasure, guys. That's awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, Charles. That's a look at that. that that's a freaking masterpiece. I know. I hate to mess up. Where, where do you? Where do you start at? Lakin starts because that's her goal. Hand me a spoon. Lakin. Let's eat. Huh? Well. You know, right there is what it's about. You know, from the field to the table. Good friends. Our good friends at Darby's tagged out on the first day. Corey and everybody had 100% success. And Lakin got her first bull of a lifetime. And now we get to partake at the table here at the Lodge of Chama. Cheers. Cheers, a great crew. Good crew. Cheers. Cheers. One of my favorite places in the world is the Lodge of Chama. Come out here, experience this visit them, and come back to Fly Rod Chronicles next week.